Alright, going into Norwich City vs Atalanta game. I'm looking at the three by two formation that Atalanta use. No, um, we just look at the defensive formation that Norwich City use against Atalanta. But mostly for the tactical analysis for today, we're just looking at the three by two formation as a whole and uh, defensive formation, whether it's a high block or a mid block or a low block, the coach use. Well, the mid block and the low block is inevitable. But, um, just look at the, the defensive principle that the coach use and also the attacking principle of the Atlanta formation. All right, now before the game, going to the analysis for the game. Let's say football is a very simple game. We have um, two principles of football, principle of attack, principle of defense. Now, many of the game is obviously score goals, but before that, there's a whole match played for 90 minutes and it's the attacking team going against the opponent's defensive principle and the opponent's attacking principle going against the um, defensive principle of that team. Now, just going into it, ready to start the match. Alright, so the centre box. Uh, the centre box meaning is to obviously protect the team and also the the goalkeeper. Right, uh, they're the main line of defence. Now, together with the defensive midfield and the goalkeeper, they create an incredible unit where they're supposed to work together. Now, once the centre box is attacking or the team is attacking, the middle centre box here in the formation is responsible for the cover of both players, which is um, cover of the both two players right here. So, yeah. Now, to all the coaches using it, it showed me that they is using two defensive midfielder and one attacking midfielder. We have the other three five two where you're going to have one defensive midfielder and two attacking midfielders. Well, a box box midfielder and a um, and a, a box box midfielder and also a deep line playmaker. But here the coach decided to use the two defensive midfielders. Now, for the defensive midfielder role, they basically create that the 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 um the connection of attack to defense. When you have a defensive midfielder, you should create an attack from a, the line from attack to defense, and they are also the general of the team. Um, in this case, you have two. So. Right, so now they went into the defensive principle that they planted and the coach is using a high block, also known as a high press. So the two strikers will press the corresponding uh, centre box. And since they're using one midfielder, one attacking midfielder, you'll sit between that centre box, that um, defensive midfielder, I mean, and cover them. Changes for this season, and that is that defensive players are now allowed in the 
So the ball is going up to the wing back. Now the wing back is literally the most important player for this formation, specific formation, due to the fact that they have to come back in, they create the width when defending and also in attacking. So they have to be extremely fit and technical, technically good on the ball. Right? They have to um, be calm and also um, ensure that they come back from when they go to attack, they come back to defend. So if you were supposed to lose the ball here, you know, you'd have to run back because he's the only person that is responsible for the weight because this formation also consists of a winger. Now, when, the, when they're attacking, the only passing option that the winger basically has to go forward most times will be the striker because he's, he doesn't have a winger, so the striker would have to pop into the space. Coach is basically using a 5-2-3 um, mid block. And the formation is a good formation for defensive wise, but the only weakness to the formation is that since you have two midfielders that are in the middle to defend, it can get of number depending on what the other team uses. For example, if Norwich is using a team on midfield then the 5 2 3 in the 2 will get outnumbered, so balls can be easily played to the middle, which is a disadvantage for the attack at Atalanta's team. In the championship, that might not be the case in the Premier League, so the way they organise themselves when the opposition have the ball is key. This Kampa, just over the halfway line, central position for Norwich City, gets it high towards Quendia, good control from here, right edge of the penalty area, back now to Sam Byron, one of the summer arrivals from West Ham. That's a point dear on the right hand side. Point dear taking on the defender, getting round it, but a great sliding tackle comes in there from uh, Palomino. Great for danger, sliding in. Fellow uh, Argentinian, and that's a goes for a throw in to Atalanta in the end at their left back position. So, Bill Hill will be playing for four minutes at Carrow Road, a seven o'clock kickoff. Uh, we do have VAR being used tonight, of course, that will be used in the Premier League. So, Lawrence City, I think, are uh, using the opportunity to get used to that and to. Make sure that the system works as it should do at Carrow Road. That's going to be another little uh, thing we've got to get used to as the season goes on. It'll be interesting if we do get a controversy tonight to see just how that all works. Here's Byron on the right hand side for Norwich City, who now played a series of snappy short passes in Atalanta territory before Godfrey swings the ball from the right out to the left and it's gathered by Jamal Lewis, who's full of running. Plays the ball into the penalty area there, looking for Camper. And it runs through to the goalkeeper, Galini. It's a fluorescent pink strip. Launches the ball immediately upfield, looking for the run of Muriel, but Godfrey's got himself well set. And so takes it back to goalkeeper Fearman, who plays it out to Closer, and turns it back to Fearman. Closer is captaining Norwich City tonight, with Grant Hanley being out. Uh, really, in the last couple of summers, we've been used to having so many new signings, a great churn of players, and having to almost come to terms with a completely new squad. But the changes this summer have been pretty subtle, haven't they? They have, yeah, and, and, and um, if you got a chance later on when we when we've got into about the kind of recruitment policy and, and, and stuff like that. And the, the thing that I've been most impressed with over the summer is not necessarily the players that they brought in, but the way they've gone about maintaining the players that we had last season. It seemed every... Yes, I 
as you can see the coach is using a high press i think it's a 5-2-3 high press due to the fact that the formation is a 3-5-2 formation but when they're pressing you can realize that they have three across the face and then two in the middle so overall for the defensive principle the coach is using a 5-2-3 in high block and in mid block and i suppose that we'll be using it in a low block That's the beauty about a high person. You can win the ball easy up front and also attack faster. And due to the fact that they have a high press, you have less numbers um, when you win the ball in front of you. But this advantage and the reason why most coaches really want to use it is due to the fact that a high press will your team would have to be extremely fit to do a high press because imagine you're running up and down for 90 minutes and you have to also press for 90 minutes. So if the team is not fit enough, uh, you know that the players can't. You know that the players won't. Um, can't. I would say manage your, the excess, excess running, then you more than just convert to a mid block, a low block, and a low block, where you, you don't high press, but you allow the team to come. You allow the team to come to you, and then that's when you decide to defend. A mid block starts in the middle. And low box starts when or so that the term they will use when you see that you part the bus you would sit literally right in front of the goal but at, as i said most times i feel like that it's inevitable due to the fact that sometimes a team will have you in your own half and you'd have to use a low block So, 
once you have a month-to-month -month marketing system, then it's 1v1 and then that would make it harder for the team to penetrate the defense and score a goal. System that means the main objective is to keep the ball and keep possession of the ball. Now, due to the system that the coach plan to use, I plan to use um, these are the three centre backs: one, two, three, and the wing back, which is the primary person to create the width for the opposition. Now, this is a striker. These are the two strikers right here and their position should be between the two center but no their position should be be between the space between the um the, the wing back and the center back on the respective side that's why i see the, this guy that is in the space right here and you have the other center back that's in the space right here now you have the two defensive midfielder that they are basically the well, they are the main order from attack to defense and they have the attacking midfielder who can play as also a false nine and drop into the space or they stay into the space which is very good. You know, we were supposed to play, we were supposed to expect this guy to come. Yeah. He's right here. Basically, a number. It is a numbers game. We have three, five, two, four, four, two, four, three, three, and the shape is actually just like that. Now you have three at the back. You have the two defensive midfielders, which is right here, and then you have the attacking midfielder who can also play as a false nine, who drops into the space to start the attack, to also be starting the attack. Yeah. Uh, Alright, uh, the striker right here, you know, as I said, only the, the, the main aim for the striker position was to stay between the wing back and also the centre back. So, they'd always look to stay between the space and create that um, attacking option. And since the wing back is responsible for the width, now he, it's his time to provide the width and more likely he'll get the ball right here due to the fact that uh, there's a lot of space and uh, easy to play uh, You know what I really, really like that because it would be easy to kind of get the ball upfield as quick as you can, uh, almost get it as far away from your goal. Now since I lose the ball after going to the principle of defence, which is a high press, as I saw, you would be a 5 to 3 high press. Thank you. 
side. And uh, that is indeed his says away again on the left hand side here. Infield to Todd Campbell. He's 25 yards from goal. Byron joins the attack now. Right corner of the penalty area for Norwich City. The Barkley end takes on Ghost and Steve. Germany gets the tackle in and crashes away for a throw in. But that's even attacking with 10 from Norwich City. And uh, moving the ball very quickly when they get it. Yeah. Um, that's the end of the tactical analysis for the Atlanta game. They use a 3 5 2 formation with two defensive midfielders and one attacking midfielder that could also play as a fans man. And, yeah, and they also used a 5 2 3 in high press, mid block, and low block. Well, I think they will use it in a low block as well because it can be used. And you have the 5 at the back, which will create that stronger defensive um, unit. So that's the end of the analysis.